Yeah, now he's going to challenge with his fastball. He's going to throw that fastball about 70% of the time, Lynn. He is heavy on that heater, but it's got some really good giddy up to it. And typically, it's going to be 93 up to 97 miles an hour. He will spin into that slider and occasional curveball as well. Shelton out of Lexington, South Carolina. He hit in the cleanup spot last night. He's leading off tonight. He was 0 for 4 in the opening game of the series. Yeah, Shelton transfers to Florida from Alabama where he had a monster year last year. 24 home runs for the Crimson Tide. Now wearing that Gator uniform. The wind could be a factor. It's going to aid balls hit to right field, but it's going to uh, hinder balls hit to left field. It's blowing pretty rapidly from left to right. There is a shift on the first hitter. Milam, the second baseman, is way out in right field. He's in the sunshine. The other two infielders on that side are in the shadow. The 3-1 pitch popped up, and this one will be up out of play, up on the roof, and we'll go to 3-2 on the first batter of the game. 70 degrees right now, lots of sunshine. Winds out of the north at 9 and gusting higher, and no chance for rain today. The 3-2 pitch on the opening hitter. Upstairs, Shelton draws a base on balls. That's night, which helped them win game one of this series. A strike has been assessed against Evans, and this ball gets away from Neal. It's going to allow the base runner to move up. So Shelton immediately gets into scoring position. A walk and a wild pitch. Yeah, it looked like the first breaking ball of the night by Gage Jump. It's always the first inning jitters, man. The first inning is the toughest inning for a starting pitcher. You're trying to get your mechanics, trying to get your rhythm going, and you're facing the other team's best hitters right out of the chute. Florida was limited to four hits last night. Yeah, Florida only had four opportunities last night with runners in scored position. LSU held them to 0 for 4. Ty Evans is late on that swing, and that's a strikeout that Gage Jump needed. A Gage Jump can do that. 24 punch outs in just 17 innings of work. He picks up his first out and first punch out of the night. A good four seam fastball just about belt high and just gets it right by Ty Evans. Here's the guy they affectionately call the jackhammer. And boy, what a career he's had. Yeah, and why not? I mean, 33 homers last year. That led the entire nation. Of course, he's a two-way player, and he's expected. He's favored this year going in to win the Golden Spikes Award and the John Olerud Two-Way Player of the Year Award, too. How about that OPS? Over 1,200 OPS this year. Jack Caglione facing the shift. So, Ben, the first three hitters have all drawn the shift from LSU on the infield defensively. Well, we noticed that last night. LSU shifted just about on every hitter one way or the other last night. So shifting a lot against the Florida Gators. Gage Jump has some room to work here with two strikes. He goes high and tight with a fastball. One ball, two strikes, a runner at second base with one out. Caglione lines that one for a souvenir. Somebody got some burned hands on that one. Yeah, that's not one of those ones I'm not sure you want to catch, unless you have a glove. Caglione hitting 375 with runners in scoring position. That's actually a little less. And we've got a foot race to the bag, and it's won by Jared Jones. Jared Jones thought he was going to throw it to Gage Jump, and then he realized, well, that might be a little closer right. than I want. And uh, he took a quick extra step and got to the bag before the runner. Well, I don't think Gage Jump got a great jump going to cover. You could see it was going to be bang, bang if he was going to shovel it over the jump or not. And I think Jared Jones realized at the last second that maybe jump's not going to get there. But as a first baseman, a good rule of thumb is never assume the pitchers. He's supposed to be there. We know that. But never assume he's going to be there. Well, here's Tyler Shellnut. The runner advanced to third. There's a breaking pitch for a strike. So Shelton is 90 feet away, but there are two outs. And this is the first batter on which the shift 
has not been placed. The pitch. Off the mark just a little bit. Shellnut has been extremely good with runners in scoring position. He's hitting 500 in these situations. He was one for three yesterday. The 1-1. One, one. Burns the inside part of the plate. Yeah, these are two offenses in LSU and Florida. Not quite as strong yet offensively as what they were last year. LSU was number one in the SEC runs per game last year. Florida was number two, but if you look today, Florida's 11th in the SEC in offense, LSU ninth as we play today. Shellnut swings and lifts that one out of play. Another nugget on these two teams, of course, Florida led the nation in home runs last year with 146. LSU was second in the nation with 144 last year. The Tigers in SEC play last year averaged a couple of homers, a little more than two a game. Look at the run scored this season. The third, the uh, first and eighth innings have been the most productive. Ground ball hit to the left side. Brasswell charges, transfers, fires, and the threat is over. So Gage. And they say he'll touch 97 miles an hour. It is a big arm. He's had a bit of trouble with control as well, having walked nine in those 18 innings. I mean, he was rated the number eight right-handed pitcher coming out of high school last year in the entire country and turned down from what they told me big time seven figures to attend the University of Florida. Bingham was two for five last night. He drove in a pair. Two balls and a strike. And he's got a good, you know, we talked about the velocity on the fastball. Going to throw a curveball slider and a changeup as well. I was looking at his curveball numbers. The average college curveball is swung and missed about 33% of the time. His curveball is swung and missed 62% wow. of the time. Wow, that's a big number. That gives you confidence when you can establish those kind of numbers, doesn't it? Yes, but the thing for him is, and Kevin O'Sullivan said this yesterday, he's got to be able to get ahead with his fastball so we can get to his really wipeout pitch, which is his curveball. The 2-2. Hit on a couple of hops to the right side. Curlin's got it. Gets it over to Caglione for out number one. Bingham rolls out second. Fielding 985, which is a nice number. Here's Tommy White, and he smashes a liner into the right field corner, and it's curling, twisting foul to the right side. White was 0 for 4 with a run scored last night. Like Tommy's working some, uh, some new spikes tonight. I don't remember seeing pink spikes from him last night. He swings at that breaking pitch. There's that curveball we talked about. That 62% just went up. How about that, Lynn? Well, that's in honor of the Blue Boot Foundation that these, this team responded to last year. And it's in honor of a, a, a young man, two years old, who drowned in a family pool. And his, his family took that tragedy and turned it into a charity which uh, gives water safety lessons and, a, and distributes a whole lot of life preservers. And they have a huge rodeo in Grand Isle every July oh, yeah. that raises a bunch of money. 2-2 two, two on White. Yeah, White's in his two-strike count. He's spread out. And he's so strong. How about that? He gives up very little when he... Yes. When he... Shortens that stride. And that was that big arm right there. Peterson reached back for a little extra there. How about 98 up and in? The 3-2 pitch. LSU looking for its first base runner, and White spoils it. Yeah, Tommy White got off to a little bit of a slow start this year, but, boy, now he went over last night. But before that, he had homered in four consecutive games, had a seven-game hitting streak before that. So starting to look like the Tommy White of his freshman year and his sophomore year at LSU last year. He came into the season with 51 home runs over the course of two years. And that's a good at bat as he coaxes a walk from Peterson. Yeah, it's hard to argue that Tommy White has not been the best run producer in college baseball the last two years. I mean, he drove in 105 runs last year in just 66 games. Of course, 105 RBIs led the nation last year. Now, I tell you what about Tommy White, and I hope I'm not jinxing him here. He's worked really hard on his defense, and he made four or five plays at Mississippi State last weekend were some of the best plays I've seen him make defensively and a really nice play last night as well. Jared Jones, who is the biggest target in the lineup, takes a strike. 
Jones was 0 for 3 yesterday. That's a good take. That's a pitch on which he might have been tempted last year. Yeah, I love Liam Peterson so far. You can see why the scouts thought so much of him. There's the breaking ball, and it is ripped into the left field corner, hooking foul behind the bullpen. It's just hard as a true freshman to get your footing in the SEC. It, it's the toughest, obviously, conference in all of college baseball. And you see these big-time performers like Liam Peterson in high school, you know, and it's an adjustment time when you when you start pitching in the SEC. And he's one of these kids that's going to get his feet wet. He's going to get knocked around a little bit, and he has so far this year. But he's one of those guys you may see maybe the second half of the season really turn the corner for the Florida Gators. The pitch is thrown hard, but high and away. That was 97 miles per hour. Yeah, and he's slim, too, 6'5", 205. Two balls, two strikes. White takes his customary short lead from first. The pitch. Ooh. That's a heater at 96, and it throws Jared Jones. That's what you call dotting the eye on the outside part of the plate and reaching back for a little extra, too. You see the catcher, Garrison, just gently rocks the outside part, and I mean perfectly done by Liam Peterson. His first punch out of the night, second out here in the bottom of the first. Clint Fagan is calling balls and strikes. Michael Banks at first base. Joseph Smith at second base. Kevin Sweeney is the third base umpire. That got away from the catcher, and White is able to move to second base. So White is two bases away. Yeah, just kind of overcooked the breaking ball. Really not much Tanner Garrison could do behind home plate to keep that in front. Well, LSU, well Florida was 0 for 4 runners in scoring position last night. LSU had a pretty good night. 5 for 13 runners in scoring position for them last night. Josh Pearson has a team leading six game hitting streak right now. One ball, one strike. On LSU's right fielder Josh Pearson. Pearson's average has ascended to 286. Liam Peterson, his last time out, got roughed up a little bit against Texas A&M. Only worked two innings, gave up six runs, only threw 35 pitches, so he should be pretty fresh tonight. Pearson was one for three last night with an RBI. The 2-1 delivery. What a gorgeous evening unfolding for baseball here. I want you to think about it for a little bit, but I I got to ask you uh -huh. what, what color the sky is. Now, you don't have to give it to us until. Oh, I, I, I've got it, though. It just you popped right into my it. mind. Well, I mean, when, when you told me that, I glazed up, and it's going to be. Now, don't make anything up. No, it's no, got to no, be no. real. It, it, absolutely. There's a liner right into the glove of the second baseman, Kurland. This year, a 12-9 and nine record. Somewhat of a slow start for Florida, but there's plenty to work with on this Gator roster, and uh, this is a team that uh, could get much better over the course of the second half of the year. Yeah, it's their work. You don't normally see the Florida Gators with nine losses at this part of the season already. Worst start since 2019, but when you talk about Kevin O'Sullivan, you talk about the Florida Gators, it's hard to argue, Lynn, the last 15 years of college baseball, they've not been the best program in the entire country, and I'll tell you why. 15 years, Kevin O'Sullivan, 15 full years. That's not counting the COVID year. They've been to eight College World Series in his 15 years. You mentioned the national championship that they won in 17, but they also finished runner-up at the College World Series twice as well. There's a lot of evidence to back up what you just said. I mean, he just, Kevin O'Sullivan just gets it done. He's never not made the postseason. Luke Heyman out of Longwood, Florida. The 0-2 pitch a little bit elevated. Heyman last night hit third. He was 0 for 4. Gage jump delivers and took something off that pitch and gets the strikeout, his second of the game. Yeah, that's a deadly combination, and it was set up well. 
by pitching coach Nate Yeski. So he elevates a fastball that just misses to the top of the zone, and right behind that elevated fastball comes the breaking ball, and well done by Gage Jump, his second strikeout of the night. Ben, take a look at Gage Jump's delivery. He's got kind of a crooked elbow at some yep. point in it. It works for him. Well, if you watch him, Lynn, he hides the ball really well. So, so there's some deception with his arm. In other words, when he takes it out of the glove, the hitters really can't see it because it's right behind his body. See how he, watch how he hides it. See how he hides it right behind him, and then all of a sudden the ball just jumps on you. A lot of pitchers come up with the ball. They can pick the ball up out of the hand, or they come back and you can pick the ball up. But if you watch him, it's a very sharp arm stroke that he keeps hid behind his hip and his rear end a little bit, and then all of a sudden he comes through with a big fastball. He's 1-1 one, one on Cade Curland. Mm, I'm not sure where that one missed. Curland was the leadoff batter last night. He was 0 for 4. Pretty good breaking ball. Definitely caught the plate. I guess it was called high, even though it was right below the belt. Oof. That time he was tardy on the 94 mile an hour fastball. That's when you know you got a good fastball, right? You get yourself in a fastball count and you throw one and the hitter still can't catch up to it. And he goes back to the bender and records his second straight strikeout. Well, so far, this is the best breaking ball we've seen from Gage Jump this year. He does a lot of work with his fastball. Let's take a look at the pitch sequence here. Starts him off with a slider that just missed on the outside part of the plate. And he comes back a little bit of an off-speed pitch. So count 1-1 one, one here. A little backdoor breaking ball. Doesn't get the call there. 2-1. And then it's just my best against yours, 2-2. Two, two. And after a really good fastball, here comes a slider behind it. He has retired five in a row since walking the opening hitter. Dale Thomas out of De Leon Springs, Florida. By the way, the sky right now. What color? The color of a pre-washed Wrangler jean. Nice. That's pretty close, don't you think? I think it's very accurate. A gorgeous evening unfolding for baseball. The one-two pitch. Spoiled out of play. Yeah, it seems to be packed again. Last mm -hmm. night was the seventh largest crowd in box history last night. That is a gorgeous sight. Swing and a miss. He takes care of business all on strikes. He to look at Liam Peterson tonight, and he's got a big arm. And don't forget Luke McNeely, another true freshman at the back end of that bullpen. For Florida picked up his first career save in SEC play last weekend. Travinsky lifts a very high fly ball to center field. The center fielder is circling, finally lands it, does Landon Russell as Hayden Travinsky sent one, sent one into the stratosphere. And it appeared that Russell was having a little trouble before he located it. Yeah, it's one of those nights with the wind blowing like it is blowing, kind of coming in from left center field across the diamond. Ball gets in the air high. Good idea for everybody to converge on the ball. So Travinsky flies to center field. Russell handles it. And here's the catcher, Brady Neal. As he and Braswell are in a conference right now with Jay Johnson. Yeah, when you when you look at Jay Johnson, you look at Kevin O'Sullivan, it's hard to argue uh, maybe the two best recruiters in all of college baseball. How about Wyatt Lankford, the center fielder last year for the Florida Gators? Had a monster year, drafted right behind Paul Skeens and Dylan Cruz. He went third in the draft. Wyatt Lankford made a big league roster this year in his first full season. He is going to be on the roster for the defending world champion Texas Rangers. That's foul by inches as it scoots by first. You don't see guys make the climb to the big leagues that fast very often, but Wyatt Lankford put up a monster year last year and had a tremendous spring training, and the Rangers just couldn't overlook him, and he's going to be opening day on Thursday for the Texas Rangers and be in the lineup. Which brings me to a point that you and I have talked about over the course of the years, and that is I believe that on every SEC roster there's at least one future major leaguer. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Maybe more. In some cases, maybe more. 
That is squibbed off the cap of the bat and a nice play by Dale Thomas at third. But my point being that you look up and down the roster of all the teams that play in the SEC, there's at least one future major leaguer. I'm not saying he's going to be a 10-time All-Star. Right. But, but that's the caliber of the roster, the potential, and the skill set that is involved uh, on every SEC roster. Well, I mean, the draft proves it out every year, and opening day rosters across Major League Baseball, if you look at what conference has the most guys on MLB rosters come opening day, the SEC leads by a mile. It's not even close. Here's Michael Braswell. He's on a five-game hitting streak. He lifts this one to center field. Russell is now called off by the right fielder, Evans, and that was an eight-pitch inning. A good inning for the coach. He's won nearly three-quarters of the games in which he has coached here in Baton Rouge. And, of course, uh, came to LSU after a fine, fine career at Arizona and uh, turned it into a national championship in his second season last year. Yeah, Scott Woodward, the AD for LSU, hit a home run with Jay Johnson. No doubt about that. Remember when Jay took the job, he said, my goal is to get LSU to the forefront of college baseball. He, well, he did it pretty quick. A lot like Kevin O'Sullivan, relentless recruiter. Well, we know the guy on the right, that's Skip Bertman, and he's seated next to Scott Woodward, the, L the LSU athletic director. Mm -hmm. So they're both enjoying the ball game. This ball looked like it hit Tanner Garrison, and when it did, it ricocheted and caught LSU catcher Brady Neal. And Brady Neal is in a lot of discomfort right now. Let's take another look. Mm. Yeah, off the, off the elbow, and yeah, you got the big mask on with the helmet, but there's an area in there where that ball can get to the side of your neck, and I think that's what happened right there. Right it's, off the elbow and into the neck of Brady Neal. It did. It was underneath the mask. And Brady Neal is as tough as a railroad spike. But that will get your attention mm. and then some. Now ah, you want to be a catcher, huh? Well, there's two places the ball can get up under. That was one of them. Yeah. The other one is self-explanatory. The other one's not good either. No. Oh, what a pluck at second base. That was Milam, the second baseman who stayed right with it and certainly saved a base there, if not more, Ben. Big time here. Most pitchers are going to take the easy way, and the easy way is over at first base, but Gage jumped quickly off the bump for LSU on a sacrifice bunt attempt by Landon Russell. Right back to him. Watch him square his shoulders, throws it in line, but what about the finish on the back end? Steven Milam just picks this ball right off the dirt and a big time play for LSU right here. Runner is on the move and he got a terrific jump. A chop down to the first baseman Jones is turned into an out. Russell would have easily stolen that base. He moves up on the three unassisted put out off the bat of Colby Shelton. And for the second time in three innings, the Gators have a runner in scoring position. This time it's two outs. For Ty Evans. Evans struck out in the first. Strike one from Gage Jump. And I, I feel like watching Gage Jump so far, he's using that breaking ball a little bit more than what he typically does. We talked about his fastball usage. Typically, it's up around 71%. He only throws that slider about 20%. I think he's been a little bit heavier on that breaking ball so far. Evans is from Auburndale, Florida. The home state is a very, very attractive recruiting base, the state of Florida. Lots of good ball players come from the Sunshine State. And now the offensive conference is broken up. Yeah, it's hard to argue that the, the state of Florida doesn't put out the best baseball players consistent in the country. Now, the weather is good year-round for getting outside and working on your skills. There's, there's a lot of competition in Florida, I though. I to say, there's a lot of big-time college. Yeah. I mean, Florida State's having an unbelievable year so far, of course. you got Miami, Central Florida, the Florida Gators. 
And on and on it goes. That's a foul ball. It hit the batter in the batter's box. Two outs, a runner at second. Yep, right off that front foot. The 0-2 pitch from Gage Jump. He wastes it high and away. Ty Evans at the plate was responsible for the only run the Florida Gators scored last night. Solo home run, opposite way to right field, his fifth long ball of the year. Now the one-two pitch against a good clutch hitter. Slammed foul, that didn't miss by much. This young man is tied for the team lead with eight two out runs batted in. Yep. 19 on the season, he's hitting 385 with runners in scoring position. Uh, this this was, was a home run last night. Yeah, in the fourth inning, just a hanging breaking ball. One of the few bad breaking balls holding through, and he just shot it out towards right field, his fifth long ball of the year. He chops this one to Braswell. He short hops it, transfers, fires, nice. got him at first base. Well done by Michael Braswell on a problems finding base hits. He's just three for 29. And he lines that one to the leaping Caglione at first base. Well, had to, hard to get it over Caglione's head. Six foot five, and you talk about an athlete, he just goes up the ladder and easily reels that one in. But a good sign in terms of contact for Milam. That ball was blistered. Yeah, and it's, it's not all about the bat for Milam. Obviously, he's already made a game-changing play with the pick over it at second base. His defense has been really good. Jake Brown takes a strike. But look, it only gets harder from here because most of the games you're going to play from here on out is against SEC-type competition. So this is when everybody's batting averages start to go down a little bit. And, of course, ERAs begin to go up. Jake Brown is making his ninth start. It's his second start in center field. He's had 10 base hits, batting 294. That levels the count at two. Florida and LSU, the middle game of the series. A smash into center field. That's the 11th base hit of the year for Jake Brown. And Ben, in limited test size, he's been impressive. No, he has. And he began the year in the lineup for LSU. And kind of found, you know, fell a little bit out of favor in some ways. And I think Jay Johnson's searching for some offense from his center fielders. Paxton Kling's been on the struggle bus a little bit. He played last night. Jake Brown's getting an opportunity tonight out in center field. And the nine hole hitter collects the first base hit of the game. Here's Bingham at the top of the order. He bounced out second to first last time. And what Jake Brown does give you is some really good speed. Like he can really run over at first base. He's a real stolen base threat. This is a lineup that does not possess a lot of stolen base threats. In fact, for LSU in this lineup, the leading base stealer is Milam. He's four for four. Brown is two for three. Yeah, LSU is running a little bit more this year. You go back and look last year, LSU only stole 30 bases. That was dead last in the SEC. They're at 21 right now, so they are running a little bit more now. Jay Johnson's idea last year, because they hit so many home runs, didn't want to run into an out, and so he played for the long game, and obviously it worked last year, but the team's a little bit different this year. LSU's not going to hit 144 homers this year like they hit last year. LSU's got 31 homers right now. That's the eighth best mark in the SEC, so kind of middle of the pack. Brown with a moderate lead, but draws a throw anyway. This lineup today represents 11 stolen bases. A 
One and one on Bingham. That pitch dives in for a strike. Now LSU has 31 homers. The Florida Gators are hitting homers not quite at the pace they were hitting them last year, but still 45 homers on the year so far for the Gators. That's the third best mark in the SEC. And the Tigers lost 85 home runs from last year's roster. The one two high and away. Yeah, I mean LSU had that monster turnover, you know, 13 players drafted last year, one signed a free agent contract. There's a lot of ways. Tommy White's the only LSU everyday player to return to the lineup. Thomas gets up throwing and it gets by Caglione. Brown rounds third. Brown will score. And the Tigers, with the ball being thrown all over the infield, pick up a run and take the lead. And while LSU doesn't steal a ton of bases, what they will do to you is they will pressure your defense is going first to third and scoring right here. Mac Bingham just puts the ball in play. And when you see the over there, the third baseman, this is Dale Thomas now. Had the ball, slides, picks it up, the throws a little bit short. Jack Caglione couldn't pick it. And when Caglione finally got to it, he was focused more on Jake Brown. And all of a sudden, all the way around from first base, Jake Brown was scored. But I'm not sure Caglione thought that Jake Brown was going to try to score there. We will wait and see how they score it. I think they're going to give an infield hit to Bingham. And there's got to be an error somewhere. Yeah, It'll be a throwing error on the third baseman, I believe. Has to be. So one nothing Tigers. Tommy White. Walked and was stranded at second base last time. He's got a teammate in scoring position in Mac Bingham. Yeah, and he's got first base open. So we'll see if the Florida Gators are really going to pitch to Tommy White in this situation. There's a breaking ball and a good one. Yep. They're not going to give him to give him. That's a 2-0 breaking ball around the outside part of the plate. White. Takes a good cut at an off speed pitch. Pretty good when you can throw an 83 mile an hour changeup. Yeah, and it's the first changeup of, of the night by Liam Peterson. We've seen a good breaking ball. We've seen a really high velocity fastball in the first changeup of the night. Here's the 2 2. Downstairs, Garrison gobbles it. One out, a runner at second base, a run in. On a misplay on the infield. Jared Jones is on deck. The 3 2 pitch to White. In the dirt. He walks for the second time. Runners at second and first with one out. Yeah, it looked like head coach Kevin O'Sullivan out of the dugout for the Florida Gators. Peterson to Jones. Nubbed off the end of the bat into foul ground and unplayable. Jared Jones is so big, so strong, and he makes that bat look like a corn dog in his hands. That's over his head as he ducks to get out of the way. Jones this year has drawn five walks with a couple of runners on base and his 20 bases on balls leads the team. Yeah, he's much improved from last year, Lynn, where his swing decisions are better. He's got a better understanding of the strike zone. And there's still some swing and miss there, but you could see the big strides from his freshman year. Occasionally he'll still chase a pitch, but he's much more disciplined than he was this time last year. Yeah, he chased a lot of breaking balls for me out of the zone, down out of the zone last year as freshman, which is normal. I mean, that's what happens. But he's got himself in a fastball count here. Let's see what Peterson offers. It was a fastball, and it's lifted very high in the air to deep right field. Evans is backing up. He's in the sunshine on the warning track. He makes the catch. The runner at second advances. 
Jared Jones powered that one to the warning track in right field. But Evans was there to grab it. That's what you call just, and I mean just, missing one. Breaking ball, elevated in the zone. Wind pushing a little bit that way, coming in from left center field. You can see the right fielder, Evans, all the way back to the wall and collects it. So here's Pearson, who lined out to second base with the shift on in the first inning. The shift is on again. Bingham is at third. White is at first. That's a breaking pitch, and it dives in for a strike. A number to the right side, and it's grabbed in foul ground. Tomorrow's game starts at 2 o'clock. Central Daylight Saving Time. Ben McDonald, Kyle Peterson, and Tom Hart on the call. It's on the SEC Network at 2 o'clock. Make sure you are joining that group. And we bid you a warm welcome to Alex Box Stadium, Skip Burtman Field, Ben McDonald, and Rollins with you. Delighted to have you wherever you you may be watching. Lynn, and you're Lynn I'm going to pick on Tommy White a little sure. bit here. It, it, I mean, it's not softball. You can get a lead. <laughs> well, he's off and running. Remember Tommy White last year, first at bat for LSU, got a bigger lead. They tried to pick him off. He hurt his shoulder. Sure. Had to have shoulder surgery. So <laughs> since then, it's like he's pretty much posting up right on top of the bag when he gets on first base. That's in the dirt and a nice save by Garrison. But wherever you may be watching your living room, maybe on a deck, maybe with a buddy, maybe at a sports bar, maybe at a, an airport waiting room. We welcome you to the ballpark here in Baton Rouge. Call a friend or two and tell them the game is on. One nothing Tigers in the third. The 2-2 to Pearson. Swing and a miss. And that ends the inning, but LSU is the most exciting player in college baseball because he does it on the mound and he does it at the plate. You know, you look at what he's done. He's been the Florida Gators best starter this year. He's pitching to a 177 ERA in his first four starts of the year. And obviously batting, you see the 400 batting average, already nine homers after 33 last year. Projected to be a top five pick in the first round in the, in the July draft coming up. Gage jump induced a ground ball to the first baseman last time off the bat of Caglione. That's a pretty good looking pitch, but a nice take by Caglione. And what's impressive about Caglione, it was a lot of swings and misses for him last year, but he hit a lot of home runs. He's got more walks and strikeouts this year, so he's taken a big jump at the plate as well. And what's equally impressive, he hits left handers just as well almost as he hits right handers. Batting average only about 10 points different left hander versus right hander. That will not go unnoticed from Major League Scouts, will it? No, I mean, because that's what they want to see. And look, there was a lot of talk. He really came to Florida. He was really highly recruited, obviously, and was the number one first baseman. But when I remember talking to Kevin O'Sullivan, and he didn't pitch his freshman year because he was coming off Tommy John surgery, and he only began to hit about halfway through the season his freshman year at Florida. But I think it's offense over pitching right now. Just because he can spray it a little bit when he gets on the mound, walks can be an issue for him. But when I look at Jack Caglione, I see a big league, no doubt in my opinion, a big league first baseman. Tyler Shellnut is first pitch swinging. Jones is chasing, but he runs out of room. You know, talking about Tommy John's surgery, believe it or not, this is the 50th anniversary. This summer is the 50th anniversary on that groundbreaking surgery on Dodger pitcher Tommy John by Frank Job out in Los Angeles. Hard to believe it's been It's that been 50 years. years. It truly was a remarkable first of its kind surgery. And Tommy John went on to pitch 14 years after that surgery. Well, I mean, you could argue that Tommy John surgery has been the most important surgery in for any. I mean, the ACL's got to be in there as well. But you talk about the careers that have been extended 
and careers that guys wouldn't have without the Tommy John surgery. And now guys are coming back at such a high rate. Now, the, down, the, the downside to it is you're down a long time. I mean, it takes the average pitcher about 12 months to come back from Tommy John. So I'm going to take 15. A few guys have come back, you know, nine or ten months. The position players have come back in nine or ten months. But most pitchers, you're looking at about a 12 months to get back to where you were. Shell nut looks at a pitch high and away. But 50 years ago this summer, the first Tommy John surgery was performed. Yeah, and that's that's ligament surgery is what it is. They take that UCL out and put a new one in. Runner at first base takes a short lead. That pitch misses. And now it's three and two. And Ben, there have been thousands and thousands of them over the course of that half century. As far as I know, the youngest person that has received Tommy John surgery was 12 years old. That's really young. But it's hard to walk through a college locker room, especially a big league locker room, and not see four or five pitchers with the scar on the elbow. Tommy well, look Jones. at LSU staff this year and, and every staff in the SEC. Yep. And speaking of that, Newt is scheduled to uh, come back maybe within two or three weeks, right? Yeah. From, I mean, from that surgery. Yeah. Jaden Newt had, you know, a LSU reliever had Tommy John surgery last year, right before the season began. And they say he's progressing well and could factor into the back of that LSU bullpen in the future. Meanwhile, back to back walks have started the water boiling around Gage Jump. Now he walked. Colby Shelton to open the game. Then he walked Caglione to open the fourth inning. He's followed that with a walk to Shellnut, and here is Luke Heyman. Runners at second and first, nobody out, and no swing. Here's after winning 24 in a row to start the season, have dropped four in a row. Heyman with a very defensive swing that time. And a much needed strike for jump. Cade Curland is on deck. Heyman struck out in the second. Curland did the same. And Dale Thomas followed them with a strikeout. Gaglione at second base. Shellnut at first as a result of back to back walks to open the fourth after the Tigers scratched for a run in the third. A little backdoor breaking ball, and I mean, just getting a piece of it. Piece of it is Heyman. Gage jump checks the runners and rocks and fires. Popped up out of play, right side. One two pitch a check swing the pitch was high and away here's the two two nubbed a foul at the plate yeah speaking of Tommy John surgery the guy on the mound for LSU had Tommy John surgery when he was in LSU or at UCLA rather back in 2022 he only threw 16 innings this freshman year had Tommy John surgery set out all of last year so he's already exceeded more innings pitched this year than he did his first two years at UCLA has Gates jump and there has been no indication of ill effects from that surgery but it needs to find the strike zone here three balls two strikes Nobody out to a board via walk. That's a little upstairs, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. And that's going to spring the LSU bullpen into action. 
Well, you talk about just missing. 3-2 count, went with the breaking ball, and it landed over the white part of the plate, but just a shade high. And so now, Gage Jump is going to have to find his way through a path of hot coals. Here's Cade Curlin, who struck out last time. Swing and a miss. Yeah, really good changeup, too. Gage Jump doesn't use his changeup very often. Florida's going to call another offensive timeout. Caglione at third. Shellnut at second. Heyman on first. They've all been walked aboard. And this is where, for a starting pitcher, you look at the game, you're up one to nothing. It's still early in the ball game. It's about bending a little bit, but not breaking, right? You don't mind giving up one run here. One run's not going to beat you in this ball game. What you want to stay away from if your gate jump is that crooked number, giving up two or three runs. There's a right-hander and a left-hander warming up for the bull for the Tigers. Brady Neal is able to corral that pitch in the dirt. Like Nate Ackenhausen, the left-hander. Will Homers, the right-hander. It's time to find the strike zone. And that pitch is tight, and now it's three and one. So all of a sudden, Gage Jump is swerving from one side of the road yep. to the other. And the misses aren't big, right? The misses are just, just off the plate. He's got to find the strike zone on the three one. Curlin fouls it away. Then I thought he might have the take, but they gave him the option of swinging at a good pitch. And now we go to three and two with the bases loaded, nobody out. Braswell steps on second, pivots, fires to first, got the double play. That's about as good as you could hope for if you're a Tiger fan. The Gators do tie the game on the ground ball by Curlin. Yeah, just a 3 2 fastball hit right in the perfect spot. Braswell going towards the bag, collects it foot on the bag a nice throw over there's Jack Caglione at third base of course he easily scores Shellnut moves from second to third Heyman and Curlin are erased on the 6-3 double play and now it's Dale Thomas who struck out last time the shift is on for the left side and a liner up the middle a clean base hit the Gators take the lead Dale Thomas Loved the first pitch he saw and sizzles one up the middle for the go ahead RBI single. Yeah, almost looked like Dale Thomas was kind of sitting on the breaking ball there and he got one. Good pitch recognition, ball elevated a little bit, just a line drive right up the middle. That's the first hit for the Gators. Jump walk the bases loaded. The Gators got a run on a 6-3 double play. And Dale Thomas was first ball swinging. And smashed one up the middle. That's the first base hit of the game for Florida. Tanner Garrison is a bit behind that pitch. Gage Jump has been terrific against right-handed pitch uh, hitters this year. He's only given up seven hits to right-handed batters. Garrison could not lay off the pitch that was up out of the strike zone. Jump has thrown 30 pitches this inning. Here we go at 0-2. Runner moving and the batter is hit. Well, Ben, it has been an odd inning for the Tigers. As Jump misses badly with this, he bounces it into the leg 
of Garrison, and now it's Landon Russell. But a walk, a walk, a walk, a double play, an RBI single, and a hit batter. Yeah, that's four walks and two hit by pitches, so six free passes by Gage Jump. He heats it up and gets Russell swinging. Russell is from Phoenix City, Alabama. And he hits it solidly on a hop to Milam. He'll go to the shortstop covering. Braswell gets the force out. And it's Travinsky, it's Neal, and it's Braswell for LSU. Ben, when you look at the season that Hayden Travinsky has had, this is a very odd statistic. Because how many times does a player who leads the team in strikeouts also leads the team in on-base percentage? Not very often. You're looking at one right there. 480 on-base percentage by Travinsky. Uh-oh. He blasts one deep to left field. It's way, way, way back. You can pucker it and kiss that baby goodbye. Home run number six for Hayden Travinsky. And on one swing, the Tigers have tied the Gators. Well, I tell you what, wind or no wind, and the wind is pushing in, that, my friends, is a long ball there. And Hayden Travinsky can do that, and that's why he is in this lineup. We've seen it in spurts. He's never really been an everyday player for LSU in his career, but in spurts, he has shown the ability to blow the ball out of the ballpark, and this is getting every stitch of one. You don't think he knew he had that one, Lynn? Yeah, he put that one in the bank early. But it's amazing that he leads the team in strikeouts and also leads the team in on-base percentage and second now in home runs. It's just a combination you don't see very often. No. But he's hitting for a high average. Does walk a lot. And he's going to swing and miss from time to time. And that's kind of been the Achilles heel for Liam Peterson early in his freshman campaign. That's his eighth home run allowed already this year in just about 22 innings of work. Brady Neal, who bounced out to third last time, is at the plate. The LSU's third hit produces its second run, and Neal goes down swinging. Second strikeout for Peterson. Yeah, that was uh, make it the third. Really good changeup too. He's shown a high velocity fastball up to 98. When you got to get your foot down and respect 98, he could pull the string like that. Good luck. And that ball was diving and fading as it got to the plate. Here's Braswell. He has fly deep to right. Strike one. Michael has hit safely in five consecutive games. Strike two. Well, down in the count, nonetheless delivers a knock to right field. Yeah, I love that approach right there. All of a sudden, Liam Peterson starting to throw a lot of off-speed pitches. So you get down two strikes, you got to think about backside, right? You got to think about right field when you get down two strikes. So watch this move to the baseball. Hands go first, barrel right behind it, line drive, base hit out towards right field for Michael Braswell. And Ben, he quietly now has hit safely in six consecutive games. It's the second longest hitting streak active for the Tigers. Here's Steven Milam mired in a slump right now. And he's fooled by that pitch. Travinsky has homered into the left field bleachers. Neal struck out. Braswell has singled. Milam at the plate. And there's a hot ground ball into right field, a base hit. Steven Milam turns on one and shoves Braswell to second base. 
Now the Tigers getting that second look at Liam Peterson and starting to have a little bit better swings. Milam sitting on the fastball and gets one right in the hole in between the first and second base. So runners on first and second and just one out for the Tigers here in the bottom of the fourth. And three of the five hits for the Tigers have come in this inning. The monster at first base. Braswell at second with one gone. And here's Jake Brown. He had a base hit last time. Brown scored the first run for LSU. And the pitch. A strike on the inside half of the plate. Well, you can throw the way the scout report tonight on Liam Pearson. They said he'd only throw that change up about 5% of the time. It's been a lot more than that tonight. About back to back and really good ones, too. Okay, right now, this kid's got a bright future. You love the body size at 6'5. Now, he's lean, 205, but he's going to fill out the next couple of years. That was another off speed pitch. Three change ups in a row. How about that? The two strike offering to Jake Brown with two teammates aboard. Bounced up the middle. Second baseman is short for one. The relay to first in time. Curland, Shelton, and Caglione. Be careful because you could get covered up in the first half of the season, no doubt about it. LSU has made a defensive change with Kling now in center field. So Paxton Kling has replaced Jake Brown in center field. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see. Jake Brown pull up when he hit into that double play. But you got to wonder. He's having a pretty good night. Singled his first at bat. Shelton goes down. And that is strikeout number five. Yeah, this would be a good sign for LSU if Gage Jump can kind of get back on track after a rough inning. Shelton helped him out. That pitch was much elevated. Here's Evans, who's 0 for 2. And he's late on the swing. Yeah, he just looks like a different pitcher all of a sudden. Yeah, something's going on with Jake Brown. And honestly, as fast as he is, they turned that double play pretty easily. So I'm wondering getting out of the box and he didn't maybe injure or tweak something trying to get down the line. We'll go back and take another look at that play. And all of a sudden, Gage Jump is back on the beam. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at Jake Brown here. Out of the box pretty quick, running. Yeah, right there, he just kind of pulls up. So something going on. I'm thinking hamstring, aren't you? It's definitely got to be lower half, no doubt. We just hope it's not anything too serious to keep him out of the lineup for an extended amount of time. Here's the big shift, the exaggerated shift with the jackhammer at the plate. Yeah, Stephen Milam, the second base for LSU, is almost playing what looks like short right field. Tommy White's going to make the play from shortstop, and he does so. White had pulled. Ball one from Liam Peterson. Both starters still in the game. We're going to have a little fun in the top of the sixth inning. It's the Ask Ben inning. So if you've got a question you'd like to pose to Ben McDonald about the Tigers or baseball in general, we'll give you the address and we'll get to the questions as appropriate in the sixth inning. Ben, what's that address? Ask Ben and Lynn is what it's going to be because Lynn's going to get some questions too, but you can... I guess it's not Twitter anymore. It's X, I guess it's called, but hit us up on at Real Ben McDonald on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. And we'll try to 
And we'll try to answer some of your questions. There it is on the screen. And this is a, of course, it's a PG, so PG questions only. Well, you do have the uh, ability to call them, though. <laughs> Bingham and White and Jones for the Tigers against Peterson. 2 2 ball game. He smashes it. A rising line drive headed to the bleachers. You can pick her up and kiss that baby goodbye. Mac Bingham has just banged his fourth home run. Look at that youngster. He's got a smile like he's got a coat hanger in his mouth. Uh, I don't get any better than that. A wow. souvenir, and on top of that, a long ball. Souvenir and boy Mac Bingham has a short stroke to the baseball. Watch how short and tight and compact that swing was. Just direct to the ball, blows it out of the ballpark. His fourth long ball of the year, his 16th RBI, and the Tigers back on top of the Gators 3 2. So Mac Bingham hits a rising line drive and deposits it in the left field bleachers. And up steps Tommy White, who has walked twice. He lays off the first pitch from Peterson. White with a big rip, but he can't find it. That was an off-speed pitch. White stays away, two and one. I want to tell you what, Liam Peterson holding that velocity too. That one's still 95 miles an hour. Now he's 80 pitches into his outing. White gets a little piece of it. Arguably the best in college baseball. And so even when he spreads out, he is still able to do damage to the baseball. A 3 2 pitch. Cold third strike on the outside corner. I'm going to tell you what, you can't throw a changeup any better than that right there. Now, Tommy White doesn't agree. But I think once he goes back and looks at it, he's going to realize this is a perfect pitcher's pitch around the outside part of the play. A little changeup. And that ball's working its way back, Lynn. You see, it's a ball out of the hand. But that circle change that Liam Peterson throws, it comes back a little bit to the right handed hitters and just knocks a little paint off the outside part of the plate. So here's Jones who's over two. Ball one. Jared has struck out and fly to right. He hit the ball to the warning track last time. Clint Fagan behind home plate the umpire. He's had a really solid strike zone tonight. It's been consistent. It's a little smaller but it, it's it's kind of where we are in college baseball today. The strike zone no doubt has shrunk the last couple of years in college baseball. It's a tighter strike zone. One out, one in on Mac Bingham's line drive home run into the left field bleachers, his fourth of the year. LSU leads three to two. This ball is not coming back. Way, way. Way back. You can pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. I'll tell you what, Ben McDonald. It would take a federal marshal, a bloodhound, and a subpoena to find that ball. <laughs> That's what you call that is a bear bomb. They call him a bear. And that ball did not barely get over the right field wall. I'm talking, it looked like about 15 rows deep, and we're talking about opposite field. And watch this. That's some power. And a no doubter from Jared Jones. Make it nine long balls on the year, 22 RBIs, and the LSU has the long ball working so far tonight. Travinsky has homered. Bingham has homered. Jones has homered. And he just missed a home run, did Jones, back in the third inning. 
to about the same direction. It just came up short on the warning track. That time, no miss. And a rip to left center field. Off the bat of Josh Pearson. He's on his way to second base. Pearson sliding. He's safe. And that moves his hitting streak to seven games. The longest current streak among the Tigers. Yeah, Landon Russell, the center fielder, was shaded more towards the pool side or more towards right center field. And when Josh Peterson hits this ball, he is thinking one thing, I have got to find a way to get to second base. A really nice job of hitting. Goes backside right there. You could tell he wasn't going to check up around first base, and I mean head first into second base. That's his sixth double of the seat. There was a time in the young part of Travinsky's career here in Baton Rouge where there were legitimate questions about how much he would be able to contribute during his career. But I'll tell you what, Ben, the last two seasons, he has answered those questions and then some. Yeah, I mean, and look, it was injuries more than it was anything that kept him out of the lineup and why he really wasn't an everyday player for LSU. Had some knee issues, some knee surgeries. But he was a big part of LSU's national championship run. Remember last year, it was the freshman at the time, Brady Neal, who caught the first 26 games of the year for LSU. He got hurt, and that's when Travinsky got an opportunity, and Alex Malizo got an, an opportunity as well. Well, he's done exceedingly well with runners in scoring position, hitting 426 this year. He's got Pearson at second base. With one out and a hitter's count, it's three and one. And that breaking pitch moves a little bit outside. That's a good take by Travinsky. Yeah, and I got to think that's going to be the end of the line for Liam Peterson. Last ball was up to 98. That's a big number for a true freshman. And what he showed me is an outstanding changeup and a breaking ball as well. So he's going to be a big player for the Florida Gators this year. And don't be surprised if he's not going to be the Friday night guy next year for the Gators. Well, the Tigers are going to let Ethan Fry get a bat now. Is Fry the guy? He's coming back from a shoulder injury. He's not able to play defensively yet, but he is medically cleared to swing a bat, and he did so with some success last night. Yeah, Ethan Fry is one of those guys that didn't get a lot of play in time right when the season began. But when he got his opportunities, he impressed. And all of a sudden, he was rocking along and starting to really come into his own, had a little bit of an injury that you, you talked about, had to take some time off, but he is back swinging the bat. Fry was two for four yesterday as the DH and knocked in a run. He's batting for Brady Neal. That's a strike down the middle. He has not had much success as a pinch hitter this year, batting 167. But with runners in scoring position, he's hitting 700. He's from Rose Pine, Louisiana. He's got a hitter's count. The 3 1 pitch to Ethan Fry. Hit sharply to the shortstop. There's an out at second. And a wild throw to first base from Cade Curlin. That was a double play that should have been completed. But the second baseman could not make an accurate pivot and throw. Yeah, it won't go down as an error right here, but it's a double play that the Florida Gators certainly should have turned right here and gotten themselves off the field. The Gators have one error tonight. Runners at first and third now with two outs. So, Ben, this gives Braswell a chance, and he had a base hit last time. After falling behind in the count, he's one for two. He's hit safely 
now in six consecutive games. By the way, as we go to the six, we'll have questions for Ben McDonald from you, our audience. What's that address again? At real Ben McDonald on X. So pour the questions in and we'll get to them in the sixth. At real Ben McDonald. And there you see the uh, Twitter or X address. Braswell with a 2 0 count. The pitch right down Nicholson Drive. There's another strike to Braswell. The 2 2 pitch from Menendez skips in off the chest of Garrison, who did a very good job to keep that ball playable. Yeah, that was big time because that was one of those ones well out in front of home plate. The ones that bounce right in front of home plate, it's a lot easier block when they land well out in front. And watch him right here. He's got the good forward, but see him come up right there. He realized he had to come up because the ball was so far out in front of home plate, it was going to take a high hop. Well done by Garrison. Here we go at 3 2 a smash to deep right field but it's going to stay in the ballpark as Ty Evans doesn't have to move too far as he backs up to get it. Welcome back everyone it's 4 to 2 as the Gators bat in the sixth and time to uh, answer a few questions intended for Ben McDonald. Yeah Ben, what's up first? one of our viewers asking about how do you feel about Kate Anderson and what could be his role going forward. For LSU. Of course, Kate Anderson is the left handed pitcher, freshman out of Madisonville, Louisiana. Pretty much been a midweek starter for LSU. And I tell you what, I love Kate Anderson. What did he strike out? 13 against Southeastern about two weeks ago. Out of, uh, what, out of 15 outs, he, he got 13 strikeouts. Um, my thoughts on Kate Anderson is this I think if one of the LSU starters falter a little bit, I think he's the next man up to jump into the weekend rotation for LSU. I, I, I truly believe that. He's got that kind of arm. I love his fastball. It's 92 to 94 with a really good breaking ball and change up as well. And so I think he's kind of next man up right now. He'll continue to throw some midweek games and he'll be available also out of the bullpen for now for LSU. Meanwhile, Gage Jump is trying to get the first batter here in the sixth, the 3 2 pitch right down Main Street. That would have hit the head pin on a bowling alley. And Gage Jump needed that. And he got it right where he wanted it. Yeah, perfectly placed. Alex Belizo now in behind home plate for the Orioles. Sets the inner third of the plate exactly where it's delivered. And a good start for Gage Jump here in the top of the sixth. Here's Luke Heyman, who has struck out and walked. And he fouls the first one out of play. Ben jump right now is in a place he has not been before and that is he's approaching 100 pitches which is the most he's ever thrown as a Tiger he's at 99 and this is the longest he's ever been in a game yeah. as a Tiger at five and a third inning well the longest in his career too I mean he was pretty much a reliever his freshman year at UCLA so he didn't get these kind of pitch counts so certainly getting stretched out tonight after only throwing 66 pitches last weekend against Mississippi State. That's a little bit off the plate. Malazzo wants the appeal. It was not a swing. Did he go? Nope. Nope. Close. Good call. Now the 2-2 pitch. That's high and tight. 
Jump got into a lot of trouble a couple of innings ago when he walked the first three batters and then hit one in that inning. He came back and threw a very tidy fifth inning. And for the second straight time, he just pours one right down the middle, and Heyman could not react. Well, you can tell the Florida Gators are not looking for the fastball on the inner part of the plate, because this is back-to-back -back punch outs looking right on the inside part of the plate. He has struck out four of the last five batters. Well, this is an impressive outing now for Gage Jump. I mean, the lug nuts got a little bit loose on him there in the fourth inning. Gave up two runs, walked the first three batters of the inning. And he has tightened the lug nuts back up and is rolling now. Well, if he gets through this inning, Ben, there's a liner that beats the shift into left center field. Bingham brings it back to the infield. A two-out base hit by Curland, his first of the game. He's one for three. If he gets through this inning, and I think it would be his last, that would be back-to-back -back nights in which the Tigers got six innings from their starters. Yeah, and that's huge. I mean, last night was – that's how you win a series in the SEC. Anytime you can just get through the first game on a Friday night and you only – you to get LSU off the field here in the top of the sixth. Gidry's best pitch is a very tight slider. And that's what he starts with. Yeah, that's kind of Gidry's bread and butter. Fastball 88 to 92. It has that slider that's a little bit different shape than most. It's almost like what you call, what they're calling today, a gyro slider, meaning most sliders from a right-hander have a little bit of right to left in them as they mm -hmm. come towards home plate. If you'll watch his breaking ball, it's almost straight down. It's almost vertical break. He's ahead in the count, two strikes. And takes care of business as Malazzo comes up. It's Steven Milam at the plate. Milam has not had success against left-handed pitchers this year. He is a switch hitter, of course, against lefties. He's batting 167. He's just three for 18. Much, much better against right-handed pitching as a left-handed batter. He's 19 for 56. That's just under 340. Yeah, a lot more comfortable from the left side, no doubt. And the damage he has done has been mostly from the left side. The 2-2. Two -two. Slammed foul. And Milam reaches and can't find it. That was an off-speed pitch of sorts. He's one for three as he goes back to the dugout. Yeah, Frank Menendez looks good. I mean, the guy had only an inning and a third innings of work on the entire season before coming in last inning. It's a good fastball from the left side. Up to 93, and that was an excellent changeup. And here's Kling batting for the first time. Trying to snap out of a slump. Kling, much like the trajectory of Milam, was hitting 400 after eight games. Since then, though, it's been really tough sledding. He's only four for 38. Yeah, and, and that was one of our questions on Twitter is, is Paxton Kling the everyday center fielder for LSU? And he was supposed to be. Uh, I mean, didn't play a whole lot last year. Played a little bit, then he got hurt and kind of got covered up a little bit. Didn't get many reps down towards the end of the season. But he's very toolsy, right? I mean, he's a Pennsylvania kid. Very toolsy. What do I mean by that? He can really run. He's got some pop in his bat. Typically, the batting average is solid. He can really go and he can throw in the outfield as well. Having said that, he's on the struggle bus right now. I mean, defensively, I think he's the best center fielder LSU has. There's no doubt when he's in the lineup, LSU's better defensively. But he's going to have to hit to be in there. And remember, Paxton Kling is a draftable sophomore. 
And MLB scouts have him projected as a second round draft pick this year. And if he is a second round, of course, he. So playing the board on the swift pace on balls. And now Mac Bingham, who's had a good night already. He's bounced out. He's reached on an infield single. And he smashed one into the left field bleachers last time. His fourth home run of the year. He takes a big cut. Let's go back and look at this swing in the fifth inning. Yeah, love this swing. You see how tight and short that stroke was to the baseball. And we said this early in the year. Matt Bingham reminds me a lot of Alex Bregman in some ways. The way he stands tall at the plate, a really short stroke to the baseball. Of course, he brings a lot of experience. You know, four-year player at Arizona. Had a good year. All Pac-12 performer last year for Arizona. Hit 350, 10 homers. He slices this one off. Five. He is a career 300 hitter and then some. And just under that right now at LSU. The 0 2 pitch with a runner on and one out. Ben, let's get back to X. What's your next question? Here's one from Barstool LSU. If you're on the mound, bottom of the ninth, base is loaded, up one run, and a prime Lynn Rollins steps ah. into the box. Ah. What are you throwing him? Now, I'm a left handed batter. Prime. That well, I think the first thing I do is ask you what the color of the sky was. Maybe try to get your attention off. I got you. Gotcha. I'm thinking you're pr probably a, were a pretty good fastball here. Very, so very, very good. good fastball. So I think I'd have to spin it a little bit. Runners on the move, and the tag is in time. Paxton Kling is gunned down by Garrison. Well, I tell you what, the throw was a pretty good throw by Garrison, but the guy that made the play, watch Kate Curlin, the second baseman for Florida, goes to cover it from the second base position and a short hop and all in one motion picks it off the dirt and applies the tag. That's big time right there. So Kling is gunned down, trying to get into scoring position. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Ooh, very close, but off the plate. And a base on balls to Mac Bingham. Boy, he's been a good leadoff batter tonight, hasn't he? Well, you talk about it. on base three out of four times. Base hit, a single, a homer, and now a walk. And Tommy White is next for LSU. Two out, one on. LSU in the last three innings has scored one in the third, one in the fourth, and two in the fifth. There have been three solo home runs. Travinsky, Bingham, and Jones in that order. The one strike pitch to White. Blasted deep to left center field. Russell is on the move. He's got room and he makes the catch where the dirt and ace. Gavin Guidry came on and threw a three pitch strikeout to close out the sixth inning. And he's thrown nothing but strikes here. There's that wicked twister again. Yeah, it's just a little bit different shape than you'll see. Braswell is calling for it now drifting to his left. He's got a lot of time to find it. And he squeezes it after a long run. So Garrison sends one up the elevator shaft, handled by Braswell. And now it's Landon Russell. Twice he's been aboard on a fielder's choice. He's over two. 
Bingham, Kling, and Pearson in the outfield from left to right. White, Braswell, Milam, and Jones on the infield from third to first. And Malazzo behind the plate. The outfield plays Russell as an opposite field hitter by a few steps. Idri working quickly comes over the top and misses three and one. We'll go to Shelton at the top of the order next. Yeah, this is the guy you want to go right after. Nine hole hitter Landon Russell came in hitting the 125. And Gidry does find the strike zone. Now it's three and two. Alonzo's going to have to make a play, and he does. Boy, that was big time all the way around there. Gavin Gidry, the confidence to throw a 3-2 breaking ball to get a swing and miss, and he does. And Alex Malazzo, probably the best defending catcher LSU has. Watch this. This is perfectly done with a block. Just a forward lean, puts the glove between his leg, knocks it down, out in front of home plate, clears the path, and collects the out over at first base. So Russell is down on strikes. Gidry coming from behind in the count to get him. And he pours one in on Shelton. Colby has walked, rolled out to Jones at first, and struck out. White is chasing into foul ground, and he's there, and he's got it. Nicely done by Tommy White. So lots of folks here, lots of folks in the television audience. Enjoying LSU Florida baseball. Here's Jared Jones. He unleashes but misses one ball one strike. Jones hit a mammoth opposite field home run and he spanks a sinking liner into left for a base hit. Well, that's two back-to-back at-bats for Jared Jones. Ball been barreled up. Long homer, his ninth homer of the year last time up, and this is just one of those top spin line drives. So this brings on Pearson. He doubled last time. And his hitting streak is now seven games. Well, this is the time of the game last night where LSU started to look for some insurance runs yeah. by putting the ball on the ground in these bunning type situations. And the third baseman for the Florida Gators, Dale Thomas, he is playing in. He's kind of expecting the bunt. There's an out at second and a return out at first. A 4 6 3 double play as Pearson. Bounces into a twin killing. Well, Curlin at second and Shelton at shortstop. They can turn it. They can turn the double play. We mentioned earlier, Florida, the number one fielding team in the SEC. This is well done here. Just a routine two hopper right over to Curlin. Shovels to Shelton and that big arm across the diamond. And a nice stretch on the back end by Jack Caglione to collect that double play. So Hayden Dravinsky comes up to the plate with nobody on base. He has fly to center. He has homered to left field and he walked last time. Twenty five driven in for Dravinsky. He continues to have the highest on base percentage of any Tiger. Dravinsky shoots that one foul. 
Don't forget the final game of the series comes your way tomorrow from Alex Box Stadium, Skip Bertman Field. It's a 2 o'clock Central Daylight Saving Time start. Kyle Peterson, Tom Hart, Ben McDonald will have it for you right here on the SEC Network. A 2 o'clock start tomorrow as these teams wrap up the series. The 2-2. Two -two. Check swing and a little roller foul. Travinsky lines this one down in the bullpen area and makes McNeely work again the count still two and two two outs nobody on base that young man is happy now it's a full count And there is ball four. You know, Ben, sometimes you're given a walk and sometimes you earn a walk. And I think the latter applied to Dravinsky's at bat right there. No doubt. I mean, he fought off some really tough pitches, was able to get a piece of them, hit them foul, extend the at bat, and finally ends up walking. And Alex Malazzo will get his first at bat of the night. Malazzo is another Tiger who through perseverance has improved his output at the plate considerably from a couple of years ago. Alex hitting 333 and bangs one up the middle on an 0-2 pitch and a very controlled swing Alex Malazzo gets yet another base hit yeah and that's been the big improvement right there was a time maybe his freshman sophomore year where the breaking balls really gave Alex Malazzo a lot of trouble at the plate but not so much the last two years and sometimes it just takes some guys a little bit longer Ravinsky after a two out walk is now at second base Malazzo following the single up the middle on a no two pitch is at first and here's Braswell who's one for three and he's spun out of there by a tight pitch from McNeely. And neither one of these clubs have been great tonight, runners in scoring position. Florida Gators 1 for 7, LSU 0 for 6, runners in scoring position. There's a nice pitch to level the count at 1. Braswell needed a base hit to extend his hitting streak to six, and he got it with a single in the fourth. He's flied out twice to right field. He's played as an opposite field hitter in the outfield, and he waves at that one. Seventh, and then entertain South Carolina on the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Mm -hmm. Boy, and to tell you, how tough it is to win on the road in the SEC. All seven series last weekend, first weekend of SEC play, were won by the home teams. That's how difficult it is. Not one road team won a series last weekend in the SEC. You Ty got, Evans at the plate. You got to take care of business when you're at home. Yep. You got to win those series, and you just got to try to scratch one out and win a occasional series on the road. That's how competitive the SEC is this year. This is the first time that Evans has seen Guidry. Gavin has faced four batters in relief and retired them all, two by strikeout. Evans has struck out twice and was robbed of a base hit on a really nice play by Braswell. Gidry likes to show that fastball up in the zone. 
Kind of sets you up, get that eye level up a little bit, and he likes to come right behind it with that breaking ball of his. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Bounce toward White, can't get it, neither can Braswell. That's a base hit through the left side. And Evans is on his way to second base, and he slides safely with the head first effort. That's his fourth double of the year. Yeah, and a pretty good adjustment to that breaking ball, too. Just hits a bouncing ball. You see Tommy White go to the glove side, can't come up with it. And really a hustle double by Evans. Came around first base, took one look at where the ball was, and took an extra 90 feet. So a good start for the Gators here in the top of the eighth. Occasional cutter, occasional changeup as well, but he'll have his hands full against Caglione. The outfield has shifted, and there's a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Caglione is 0 for 2. He has walked and scored, but he also has grounded out twice. He's got a teammate at second base. There's another bender, and Caglione can't find it. Two really good and well executed sliders from Nate Ackenhausen. Starting the ball right there, kind of center part of the plate, and just kind of working it off the outside part. Yeah, you can tell he really didn't want to throw that fastball near the strike zone. That's almost like a setup pitch to kind of get right back to that slider. But if you're going to throw the slider, I would not throw it for a strike here. Maybe started it as a strike and just work it off the outside edge. Braswell cannot make the play. Now throws it back to third, but there is no tag attempt. Braswell was leaning up the middle. That ball was scorched and just caught him in a bad place. Yeah, and it was the slider away. And I don't even think this is even a strike, but this is what kind of plate coverage that Caglione has. Remember, he's six foot five, long levers. He just goes out and covers this ball, hits a dart to Braswell on the backhand side. But first and third, nobody out. Go ahead, run now, standing in the batter's box. The ninth inning to win the first game, nine to five. And you're up to date in the SEC. Yeah, Georgia was swept last weekend by Kentucky. Meanwhile, nobody out here. The tying run at, at first base. And here's Shellnut, who has grounded out, walked, and struck out. Ackenhausen works the 0 1. And he got some help from Shellnut. The infield is back. It's at double play depth. The pitch wasted high and away. LSU has trailed once in this game after three and a half innings. It was two to one. Since then, the Tigers tied it in the fourth and got two in the fifth with a couple of home runs. Swing and a miss. Ackenhausen took something off that pitch, and it had Shellnut out in front. That's a big strikeout. Big time change up here. I mean, just takes a little bit of that, turns it over, and works it down and away. You've got to trust that pitch, don't you? Yeah, I mean, you got to throw it with conviction. I mean, it's got to look like the fastball. It's got to look like the same arm speed coming out of your hand. You trust the grip. You turn it over. It's a pitch you've thrown a thousand times in the bullpen. It's about execution. The challenge continues with Luke Heyman. He has walked in between a couple of strikeouts. He's first pitch swinging. He lifts it to very shallow center field. Paxton Kling is coming on, still coming on, and finally makes the catch. Wow, Kling ran a long, long way. He covered a couple of furlongs before he got to that ball. Yeah, he was playing deep. And you can see the second baseman, Milam. Braswell's going out from the shortstop position. Milam called it right there, but he sees Kling coming. And he collects the out, quickly gets it in. Well, this would be huge for LSU and a momentum killer for the Florida Gators right here. The shift is on for Curland. 
Florida had to first and third and nobody out and all of a sudden back to back outs. Steve rank one. Kerland has struck out bounced into a double play and he singled last time. He's a capable hitter. There are three Tiger defenders on the left side of the infield. Ackenhausen rocks and fires swing and a miss. Two quick strikes two outs runners on the corners in a 4 2 ball game. We play in the eighth. Boy, this crowd is going to come to their feet. They're sensing a big time moment for the Tigers. Swing and a miss. Malazzo cannot get to that ball in time. A run scores. He induced a swing, but the ball bounced away from Malazzo. There was nothing Alex could do. By the time he discovered where the ball was, the runner had the advantage, and that one just kicks right. Yeah, and he couldn't pick it up in time. He had time to collect it out, but really couldn't tell where the ball went. And the Florida Gators catch a break here. Nice job of blocking it, but it just squirts away from him. He turns towards the umpire, but he realizes where the ball is. And I tell you what, give Curlin a lot of credit. He got out of the box quickly and got down the first baseline. So it's a strikeout and a wild pitch. Evan scores. We've got a one run game. And a quick strike on Dale Thomas, who has struck out singled in a run and struck out again. This is the third pitcher he has faced. Ackenhausen delivers. And this ball is hit out to left center field. Bingham is under it. Bingham squeezes it, and the Tigers get back. Played for it all last year. Here we go. Stephen Milam at the plate. LSU protecting a tenuous one run lead. Yeah. LSU would love an insurance run here. And Ben, it'll be eight, nine, and one in the order for the Gators in the ninth. It's eight, nine, and one for the Tigers in the eighth. Milam takes a strike. Steven is one for three. He lined out, he singled, and he struck out. And he's ahead in the count, three and one. Luke McNeely has done a good job in relief. And the right-hander brings it over the top and misses a five-pitch pass. Milam is aboard, and you can't ask for more in a one-run game late. Nope, leadoff guy on. Leadoff guy gets on in college baseball. He scores about 51% of the time. But this is going to be Paxton Kling, and this is no doubt a bunt situation for a couple of reasons. One, LSU needs an insurance run, wants a chance to get a runner in score position. Kling's been scuffling a little bit at the plate, so I'd be shocked if he's not putting down a bunt here for Bingham, who is on deck and been really good. The first order of business is to bunt a strike, and that one wasn't. 12,892 paid attendance, the second biggest crowd in the history of LSU baseball. The pitch is a strike. And the bunt doesn't have to be perfect because Milam could run. He can really get down the line from first to second. So the bunt just has to be put on the ground. Boy, and I tell you what, Kling might have got pinched right there. Let's see where his right hand is. See how his right hand, the fingers are starting to come over the barrel of the Ouch. bat, and they teach you not to do that, and that's the reason why. Suppose to kind of make a pinch right here and get your, your right hand, if you're a right-handed hitter, and get it behind the bat, but Kling was kind of grabbing the bat there, so he left his fingers exposed. And he is in a lot of pain. You get your fingers smashed up against the barrel of the bat. By the pitch. And McNeely, I tell you what, did a really good job. He's got that two seam fastball. And he just bored it right inside to Paxton Kling. And Ben, his hand may have been extended up up too much on the barrel of that bat, too. He yeah. wasn't giving himself a lot of room, a lot of room on that bat to bunt. Let's see what he does here with a one-two count. 
He has nearly hit. He has been hit more than any other Tiger. Two balls, two strikes. Milam at first base, nobody out. Kling lines one to his counterpart in center field, and it's caught by Russell. King cranked, uh, Kling cranked it, but right toward the center fielder. He hit it well. Yeah, that's a good sign for Paxton Kling. One out, one on for Mac Bingham. He's had a really good day at the top of the order. Yeah, good day yesterday, too. Two for five, a couple of RBIs, a single and a double. He's backed that up today. Reach base three out of four times, including a homer and a single. And a walk. He's been on base three consecutive times after rolling out second to first to open the game. Two o'clock start tomorrow as these teams wrap up the three game series. Kyle Peterson, Tom Hart, Ben McDonald with you on the SEC Network. The pitch. Tight. LSU has out hit Florida 10 to 4. Florida only had four base hits yesterday. If you're thinking potential for a stolen base, Milam is the team's leader with four. He has not been caught. Garrison has thrown out a would-be base stealer. I don't look for Milam to run here, and, and the reason why is you'd like to get Tommy White to the plate. If Bingham gets thrown out, and Bingham, or if Milam gets thrown out and Bingham makes out, then Tommy White doesn't get a chance to hit. That one breaks over for a strike. One out, one on, a one-run lead for the Tigers. We play in the bottom of the eighth. LSU did its damage in the middle innings. With one in the second, uh, one in the third, one in the fourth, and two in the fifth. Florida picked up two in the fourth and one in the eighth. Milam with a very short lead and a check swing foul ball off the bat of Bingham. Max shot a line drive home run into the left field bleachers. And that came in the fifth inning. His fourth of the year. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit sharply to the shortstop. Shelton over to Kurland and safe back at first base. Well, Milam is cut down at second. Bingham reaches on the fielder's choice, and White gets his chance with two outs and a runner aboard. Yeah, Kevin O'Sullivan quickly out of that Florida dugout. I'll give credit to Bingham there, really hustling down the line. And he knows who's hitting behind him. His idea is to get the first base, not be the third out. And you're going to see some split finger fastballs here. And when it's working, the bottom drops out of it about three or four feet in front of the plate. I mean, Smith's got a fastball splitter and a slider. The 0 1. There's the splitter. White walked in the first, he walked in the third, he has struck out and fly to center since then. Two balls and a strike, two outs, a runner at first. LSU's lead is by the thinnest of margins. It's a 4-3 advantage, Tigers. White rips it right back up the middle. Grabbed by the second baseman. Did they get there in time? No. Kurland made a whale of a play deep behind second base. He had no chance to make. What's your gut telling you here, Lynn? After further replay, 
the call in the field will be overturned to out. And I think they got it Columbus right, man. Has two challenges left. I think it, it, it was did too. It was very, very close. And Ashton Wilson is going to pinch hit for Garrison. It's Nate Ackenhausen on for his second inning of relief. And he's working to Wilson with a count of 1 0 and a one run lead in the ninth. There's a strike, it levels the count. Garrison was hit twice by a pitch and popped up to the shortstop. And it's Wilson batting for the catcher Garrison. Ackenhausen delivers inside. Two balls and a strike. There's a right hander warming up and a left hander getting ready in the LSU bullpen. Aston Wilson only three at bats on the year. Does not have a base hit. The 2 1 delivery. Fouled off. Ben, you don't want to do, if you're a Tiger fan, you don't want to do what Florida was able to do in the first inning and the fourth inning and the eighth inning, and that is get the leadoff batter aboard. The first two were by walk, and the eighth inning started with a double by Evans. The tying run at the plate. Every time a Gator walks up there in the ninth. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Just a little bit out of the strike zone. Boy, Nate Ackenhausen thought he had strike three there. But the zone's been consistent. It's been small, but it's been consistent. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Very high, and the leadoff batter is aboard. It's the third time Tiger pitchers have walked a leadoff batter tonight. And Ben, you can only play with that fire for so long before it ignites. Yep, the last thing you wanted to do, obviously, is walk the leadoff batter, and especially a batter that had three at-bats you know, on the entire season. They are going to let Russell bat. He came into the game hitting 125, one for eight. Unless you expect him to bunt here. He's one for 11 on the season. Tommy White well on to the grass over at third base. Russell has reached twice on a fielder's choice and struck out. He's 0 for 3. Bingham in left field is under it. There's the first out. Well, if you're following LSU gymnastics, the Tigers have won the SEC gymnastics championship tournament down in New Orleans with a score of 198.075 with Alabama, Kentucky, and Florida finishing second, third, and fourth. The pitch to Shelton after a long wait. Strike one. And Ben, just to finish up on the gymnastics, LSU will be a number one seed in one of the NCAA regionals. So they positioned themselves nicely. Number two in the country right now behind Oklahoma. The pitch is another strike in the elevated in the strike zone. Well, I like what Ackenhausen, this is a veteran move, right? I mean, we got the shot clock now. You got to deliver the pitch within 20 seconds, but he's coming set quick as Ackenhausen, and he's holding the ball. And he's letting that clock tick down, tick down, tick down, almost to the very end and letting it go. There's a check swing and a ground ball left side. Picked up by White, transfers, throws, out at first base. Shelton gunned down by White. Wilson was able to move up to second base with two outs. Well, a nice play by Tommy White. Almost playing the shortstop position. Shift his own, quickly comes and gets it. 
And boy, Tommy White's arm is totally different to me this year than last year. Had that surgery in the offseason, and he's throwing it like he did his freshman year over at NC State. Now it's Ty Evans who doubled last time and scored. Prior to that, he had struck out twice and was thrown out on a fine play by Braswell at shortstop. The game is on the line with two outs and the tying runner at second base. The shift is on. Ty Evans hit the homer last night in the fourth inning off of Luke Holman. He's from Auburndale. The pitch downstairs. And Ackenhausen wants a new baseball. Now Caglione is on deck. He got two out. But Ty Evans can hit. I mean, came in hitting 367, five long ones, 19 ribbies. A liner to center field. This is down for a base hit. Paxton Kling comes up firing. It's cut off on the infield, and we've got a tie game. Ty Evans delivers a solid line drive to center field to score Wilson. Well, that's your leadoff walk, right? And right. And when the first batter of the game or the inning gets on, he scores a little over 50% of the time. That number just went up in a really nice, Short stroke by Ty Evans right there. Just powers this ball out in center field. Really not a chance for Paxton Kling. This is Wilson turning the bag at third and scoring easily. And Florida. Off of Nate Ackenhausen. That was back in the eighth inning. Caglione was the first batter that Faced uh, Ackenhausen and a hot ground ball up the middle is fielded. And the race is on to second base and the Tigers do get the force at second. That's big time. Average whiff rate college baseball for a fastball about 18%. Jones, Pearson and Travinsky will hit in the ninth. Unless somebody ends it earlier. The 1 0 pitch. Right there for a strike. Let's go back and look at the fifth inning swing from Jared Jones. Yeah, they call him the bear. This is the reason why. You talk about big time opposite field pop, and he powered this ball up about 15 rows deep, straight away right field. Jones' ninth long ball of the year. Two balls, two strikes on the first hitter in the ninth. Neely delivers the 2-2. Swing and a miss. There's out number one. Yeah, and that's that big arm, big fastball. Talked about the swing and miss rate with this pitch right here. He just giddy up through the zone and gets it right by Jerry Jones. Just a shade tardy. So Pearson comes to the plate. He has doubled in four at bats. He's lined out, struck out, and hit into a double play as well. Ball one. Trovinsky is on deck. Lou Kamen, who was the DH, is now behind the plate. The out made at first with Neely covering. That ball took a little bit of an odd bounce, but Caglione was able to get to it and get the force three to one. So now it's Travinsky. <laughs> 
Travinsky has flied to center, homered, walked, and walked. Steve, right? Mm. 95 right on the outside part of the play. Travinsky, a good fastball hitter, though. That's wide. It's two and one. Yeah, time to sit on the heater here. This is where you can't let the fastball beat you in a two one count. Get your foot down and get it going. If you spin your breaking ball, you might swing and miss it by a foot. That's okay. Travinsky lifts a fly ball to shallow center field. Russell is coming on. Bullpen activity getting going. There's a strike to Tyler Shellnut. Shellnut is 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts, a walk, a run scored, and a ground out. Ackenhausen brings the pitch. He misses. That levels the count at 1. Two and one. Swing and a miss. Ackenhausen got that one up and by the right handed hitter. Malazzo creates the angle, throws it down to first base. And the ever active one behind the plate is able to grab that swinging strike on a bounce and turn it into an out at first. Yeah, a really nice pitch too by Ackenhausen. So let's start with that a dive bomb changeup. Malazzo. Malazzo keeps it right in front. So one gone. And it brings on Heyman. He started the game as the DH. He's now the catcher. And he's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts, a walk, and a fly ball to center field. That was a breaking pitch and a nice one. It darted in on the left handed batter. Yeah, three the right handed batter. Three quality pitches by Ackenhausen. Good fastball, low down his fastball. Nice change up, a little slider. There's that slider again, just to the inside part. You can make a living there, can't you? Mm hmm. And what pitching in does for you, it speeds up the bat a little bit and it allows him to get to that change up if he wants to use it from time to time. Did you make any coffee? I did. Did you? Yeah, I drank it though. Oh. But I can make another cup. Do you need a timeout? No, I can do it in between innings. Uh oh. Ackenhausen bears that one in too much, and Heyman is hit by the pitch. Yeah, trying to come back inside with that fastball and just a little bit too much. Looks like Jay Johnson's going to stick with Ackenhausen. Got a couple guys loose down in the bullpen. Here's Kate Curland out of Tampa, Florida. He has struck out, bounced into a 6 3 double play, singled, and then reached in the eighth inning as it was a strikeout and a wild pitch, and that extended the inning, and then things got worse for LSU. Well, it's going to be tough for LSU to turn double play right now because the shift is on. So Milam is on the shortstop side of second. Gave up one in the eighth, and they gave up one in the ninth. Heyman takes a moderate lead, if even that, at first base. You're right, Ben. That shift is going to make it really difficult because Milam is playing in a very uncomfortable position in terms of covering second. Yep. 
LSU is just given the entire right side pretty much to Kate Curley. The 1-1 one, one. hit right through the right side. The runner is on his way to third. Here's the throw cut off at second base and now runners on the corners and here come the Gators. Kerland easily beat the shift as he shot it through the right side. And I think that was his approach. So he saw a giant hole over there on the right side. And with Jerry Jones holding the run at first base, it is a lot of room over there. And Kerland uses it perfect in first and third and only one out. Had Milam been in his normal second base position, that was very likely a double play. But the numbers position LSU and all teams otherwise. And they're going to issue an intentional pass to set up the double play. So Dale Thomas is walked intentionally. Field last night for the Florida Gators. Mackenhausen delivers. Guy tries to bunt it and fouls it off into Malazzo. I think that hit him on the right hand. He's clutching that hand to his chest, trying to fight off the pain and the numbness. Yeah, it looked like a foul tip. Yep. You see, look at Alex Malazzo. He's trying to keep that right hand as small as he can. He's got it balled up in the fist, but it was just exposed enough. Guy had three at bats last night. He was hitless. Now the infield is drawn in tight. And that's a big strike, making it 0-2. But Ben, the infield was back looking for the double play, and now it has yep. come in toward the plate. Well, as soon as Zackenhausen got ahead in the count, infield came in. And obviously the play now is everybody come home with the ball. We play in the 10th. Florida has come from two back to tie it. And the pitch way upstairs. Can Guy be the guy? Only one out. The bases are full of Gators. The pitch. Chopped to Milam. He bobbles it. Going to come to the plate anyway and gets the out. Oh, baby. Milam bobbled that ball, but he was able to snatch it with his throwing hand while it was being lifted out of his glove. Yeah. LSU catches a break right here, no doubt about it, because it's in the glove and it pops up, but it pops up right to the hand. And you talk about some athleticism by Stephen Milam. And of course, Alex Malazzo at home plate, playing like a first baseman. Not only did Milam make the recovery, but then he was running at an awkward angle and still managed to throw a strike to the chest yeah. of Malazzo. That ball could have went anywhere. Now the infield retreats with two outs. Can the Tigers shut off the Gators here in the 10th? Here is Landon Russell. He has not been much of a hitter to this point in the season. And this is his first at bat with the bases loaded. Russell is hitting 083 with a small sample size. Here's the pitch, the one strike delivery by Ackenhausen. Swing and a miss. The crowd coming to full throat. It's the second largest crowd in the history of Alex Box Stadium, Skip Bertman Field. The 0 2 way up and out, and Malazzo had to reach as far as he could to save it. Boy, and that was a snag by Alex Malazzo there. I mean, he's down on one knee. You talk about athleticism, too. Here we go at 1-2. He struck him out. Ackenhausen battled. Landon Russell. Here's Malazzo. LSU needs a base runner to apply pressure. Malazzo hit an 0-2 pitch into center field last time for a base hit. 
And he falls behind 0-2 again. Maybe this is where Alex likes it. Maybe he's comfortable in two strike counts. Now the umpire's going to slow things down a bit. Yeah, Slater's one of those guys. He likes to get it and roll. The 0 2 to Malazzo. Off the mark, 1 and 2. We've got some bonus baseball, some land yap at the ballpark for you. Malazzo remains alive as he slivers it away. Two o'clock start tomorrow. Unless this one is still in progress. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> Peterson, Tom Hart, Ben McDonald with you on the SEC Network. The pitch. Over the outside edge and Malazzo is caught looking. Boy, and a perfect pitcher's pitch by Slater here. Fastball's got some run and it runs back. Watch this. Starts a little bit off the outside part and it just gradually works its way right back to the outside part of the plate. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, as a hitter, you see it at, out of the hand, and it's a ball out of the hand, but it just kind of leaked it back on Alex. Here's Braswell. He's one for four, and he takes a strike. That one had some dart to it. And you're right, Slater likes to get it and go. I mean, there is no hesitation with him. Let's move on, he says. Look at this. Yeah, and you do have the clock if you're a hitter, right? You just got to be in the box and ready with 10 seconds. You've got to be alert to the pitcher. So you can slow him down a little bit, but Braswell's working right along with him, quickly in and out. Then there were only five seconds that had elapsed on the clock. That's how quickly this pace is. LSU desperate for a base runner to apply any kind of pressure to Florida. We play in the bottom of the tenth. The Tigers have out hit the Gators ten to five, but it's four apiece on the scoreboard. Thomas guns it over to first base, two outs. Thomas to Caglione. And now it's up to Milam to try to extend the inning. He's one. For three with a walk. Well, call a buddy and tell him we've got extra innings going. A little bonus baseball for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. On a Saturday night. Slater has looked good, hasn't he? Yes. Really good slider. And just enough fastball, if you sit on that slider, he can get the heater right by you. The pitch. A little bit high. Milam lifts it to left field. Shelna coming on. He's got plenty of time and plenty of room. It's a one, two, three inning. And that is nine in a row retired by Florida relief pitchers. Work 21 years. Wow. Just a blink ago. It was a blink ago. You got another 20 in you? Another 20? I'll have to debate that a little bit internally. <laughs> No, I think the answer is quite <laughs> quite easily no. How about Ackenhausen? Still on the mound in relief. Yeah, in his fourth inning of work now. Up to 50 pitches. He's gone as long as 3.2 innings this year. Well, he brings a lot of value, obviously, because he gets left handers out and right handers. But the length is what you're talking about. Anytime you get a pitcher, especially a relief pitcher that can give you multiple innings out of the bullpen, it's valuable. The one two pitch 
slivered foul. Ackenhausen's first appearance was against VMI on the 16th of February. He went three innings in that game. And then his next outing, which was six days later against Northern Illinois, he went three and two thirds. Malazzo will not have to throw it, it appears. Well, Nate Ackenhausen has had him all working tonight. That was the slider kind of down away. He's shown us a really good change up. And and now it's Ty Evans. Evans sends a fly ball out of play on the right side. That's a parking lot souvenir. LSU softball team lost to Missouri tonight. LSU's gymnastics team won the SEC championship tournament in New Orleans. And will be a number one seed when regional play starts in the NCAA championship tournament. And that starts next weekend? Not quite sure. Might be a gap. The pitch upstairs. There's a smash into right field, a base hit. Boy, Ty Evans. 0 for 3 his first plate appearances. Two strikeouts and a ground out to shortstop. But his last three, how about a double, an RBI single, and this another single for him. So a good night at three for six night. Ben, a quick update on that LSU gymnastics triumph. Haley Bryant in the all around did something that is rarely done. 39.8, that's averaging 9.95 per four events. She is the best all arounder in the history of LSU and we slam this one into deep right center field. It is carrying, 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 and it's gone. A two run home run. The jackhammer smashes his 10th of the season and gives the Gators a lead for the first time since the third inning. Well, that's what he does right there. And he's barreled the ball up each of his last two times up. And this ball elevated just enough. And this is almost like a two iron getting out of here. You talk about some exit velo. Just powers it out, out to right center field. Caglione's 10th long ball of the year his 23rd RBI and the Florida Gators have silenced the crowd here at the box. Well this game was in LSU's control until the eighth when they surrendered one gave up another one in the ninth and have given up two here in the 11th. And now we go to Shelna but but quickly back to Haley Bryant's just superb work. I mean this is uh, something that does not come along very often one of the highest all around scores in the history of collegiate gymnastics. Malazzo diving, but he can't make the catch. Alex Malazzo doing all he can do behind home plate, just can't get there. These skaters have been resilient. LSU was cruising along. With a four to two lead through most of the back half of the game. But then came the eighth and then came the ninth and then came the 11th. Yeah, no quit in the Florida Gators never has been. They fought their way back and now have a two run lead. A little backdoor breaking ball by Nate Ackenhausen. Well, he has tied a season's high with six strikeouts. His career high is seven. And that came against Tennessee last year in the College World Series. Heyman can't find it. And there is no action in that Florida bullpen, which means Ryan Slater going to be back out to try to close this one down. Well,
Well he looked good in the tent didn't he. One ball one strike two outs. The second largest crowd in the history of LSU baseball at home. Stunned by the reversal on the scoreboard. It'll be nine one and two in the order for the Tigers in the 11th. LSU has not had a base runner over the course of the last nine batters. There's a strike on the outer part of the plate. The three two pitch coming from Ackenhausen. And this is blasted hooking and foul. Well some Florida Gator fans down there in that left field oh, corner yeah. they're happy about things. There's a base on balls the second time that Heyman has been walked along with a couple of strikeouts and a fly ball to center. And it brings on Cade Curland. It's Cade Curland who has two base hits tonight. He's two for five. A runner at first base. And two runs in on the tenth round tripper of the season by Jack Caglione. It came with a base. With a teammate aboard, it was Evans who singled and Caglione who whacked one. Yeah, you talk about a bullet out to right center field. And we talked about how he can cover left handers almost as good as he does right handers. 390 came in hitting off lefties, 410 off of righties. And he got two good looks at Nate Ackenhausen singled and then hit one really hard for a fielder's choice in the out for that third time. Was the charm. The one one to Curlin. Smashed high and deep. It's back at the wall and it is caught out there by Mac Bingham. Mac Bingham went to the wall. Steve right one with Ryan Slater pumping them home for the Gators. Clean came into the game after Jake Brown appeared to be shaken up. He sends this high fly ball into the right field corner. Evans with a long, long, long run. He got it. That's one whale of a play sliding on his backside. Ty Evans with a marathon run and then makes a sliding catch on the backside of the bullpen mound. And I mean, he went a long way, Lynn. He was shaded a little bit towards right center field. And you talk about a long run. And another example of why the Florida Gators are the best defending team in the SEC. A superb catch by Ty Evans. And now Mac Bingham. He's been good tonight, has Bingham. An infield hit, a home run, a walk. He takes a strike. Now it's one and one as Ryan Slater likes to get the ball and go. The 1 1 pitch off the mark. LSU needs a base runner to bring the tying run to the plate in the person of Tommy White or Jared Jones if it goes that far. Here's a screamer into the left field bleachers down that third baseline. And the pitch lifted out of play. That's a souvenir. Up into the second deck bleachers. Bingham trying to do anything to create a presence on the base paths. The pitch 
Popped up, straight back, and no play. Two balls, two strikes. Bingham battling Slater. Yeah, he's fought off some tough pitches, too. Just looking for a mistake. Bingham is spraying baseballs all over the lot. The count holds at two and two. Ryan Slater rocks and fires. Stee right three, and it appeared that Bingham knew it. Yeah, this ball almost hard to the plate. And again, this fastball does come back a little bit, but it starts it on the plate, and it pretty much worked dead center. And Bingham caught looking at LSU down to their final out. Can Tommy White become a base runner? He chops this one up the middle. It's going to be a tough play for the second baseman. White legs it out. Tommy White collects his first base hit of the series on a little chop over the mound and the slow roller picked up by Curlin, but he had no play. Yeah, all the middle infielders playing back where they should be. Two out, nobody on. And boy, Curlin does all he can do, but Tommy White legs it out, and that gives LSU an opportunity. Tie and run now at the plate in the way of Jerry Jones. Jones is two for five with a long home run to right center field. And that's where he needs to be thinking here, right center field again. White off on the pitch. They were not holding him, and he'll take the base. One ball, one strike. The Tigers are down to their last batter. Trailing four to six to four, trailing by two in the 11th. One and two on Jared Jones. White will take no chances from second base. LSU had a wire to wire win last night, but the Tigers have not been able to hold a two run lead tonight. Boy, that was a good take right there because that slider started as a strike out of the hand and just worked off the outside part. And the pitch hit sharply to the shortstop. And there's the final out. Shelton over to Caglione, and the Gators complete the comeback uh, victory. 6-4 the final. They got six.